go telling on the mountain over the hills and everywhere go tell it on the mountain that jesus christ is born well good morning and welcome we're glad that you are here with us today and we want to remind you that today is family worship, so for any of the children, there is a children's bulletin with crayons and colored pencils in the entrance that you can make use of. Our midweek discipleship resumes this Wednesday, January 3rd at 7 o'clock. Uh, we have discipleship groups for all ages, so you are welcome to come participate in that. And then Sunday, January 7th, is our first Sunday potluck. So come join us for worship and then stay for lunch and fellowship with us. And the following week, January 14th, we have a church board meeting after the morning service. As always, you can find our announcements and details about those in our church bulletin and at flychurch.org. Well, this morning, as we do begin to worship, I invite you to stand and you will find the psalm for today inside your bulletin. Psalm 148, and what better way to transition from one year into the next than by praising our good God. So I invite you to worship with me by reading the scriptures in bold as we worship this morning. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him from the skies. Praise him, all his angels. Praise him, all the armies of heaven. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, all you twinkling stars. Let every created thing give praise to the Lord, for he issued his commands, and they came into being. Praise the Lord from the earth, you creatures of the ocean depths, fire and hail, snow and frost, wind and weather that obey him. Mountains and hills, fruit trees and cedars, wild animals and cattle, creeping things and flying birds. Kings of the earth and all people, rulers and judges of the earth, young men and women alike, old and children together. Let, Let them, them all praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is exalted. His glory is above earth and heaven. Praise the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good to see you here this morning. Let's pray together today. Our gracious Heavenly Father, thank you for meeting us here in your house, for coming into those doors with each one. May your Holy Spirit fill us, strengthening us, that we might be able to worship you well, to give to you the praise and honor that you alone deserve. We give you thanks today for the gift of Jesus Christ, your Son, and we pray, use this time to build us up into the image of and likeness of Jesus Christ, so that we may become more and more like him. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> All right, y'all, we're finishing up our Christmas songs today and starting with 173, page 173. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare Him room. And heaven and nature sing, and heaven and nature sing, and heaven and heaven and nature sing. Joy.
are turning to page 182. 182. Good Christian men rejoice with heart and soul and voice. Give ye heed to what we say. News, news, Jesus Christ is born today. Oxen ass before him bow, and he is in a manger now. Christ is born today. Christ is born today. Good Christian men rejoice with heart and soul and voice. those who've been asked to come and wait on us for the morning tithes and offerings. Let's pray together today. Gracious Heavenly Father, giver of every good and perfect gift, we thank you that we have been recipients of your blessings. And now we come and share some of those back. We pray, take these gifts and offerings we bring into your house. Use them to build your kingdom, blessing gift and giver alike, and making us good stewards of all that you entrust us with. In the name of Christ Jesus, we pray. Amen. Finishing off with 175, page 175. Oh, come all ye faithful, joyful and triumphant. Oh, come ye, oh, come ye to bed.
what day it is, right? 12, 31, 23. So it's 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. I forgot that till I saw it just this morning and went, yes. It's a great number, but it's better to see you guys. Now, it is family worship today, so all the little ones will be staying in. And as Miss Michelle said, there's some bags in the back and with all kind of things in there if they need those. And so they'll be staying here with us, which means there's more people to give hugs to. Why don't we stand up and give a hug or handshake today? So very good to see you here this morning. Ending the year with worship, right? This morning as we turn our hearts toward prayer, be mindful of those in our world who are suffering due to the ravages of war, natural disasters. Think about our world's leaders and especially our nation's leaders praying that God will guide them we remember our soldiers, our sailors, our airmen, our Marines, our Coast Guard, those who serve as law enforcement agents and first responders. We ask that you would continue to pray for Dorothy and Reddick, for Brenda, for Tammy, for Bailey, for Carly, Andy and Betty Jo, for Edna. Keep Clara in your prayers for Ann Capley, for Miles, the Oliver family, I noticed that uh, young Jacob Richardson has been diagnosed with COVID and that's difficult on him. So keep him in your prayers. Marilyn, Aunt Marilyn, remember to pray for her, for Johnny's mother. Remember Saline, who's out sick today, and Sharon Sisk, who's also sick, and Shiloh sick today, praying that God will touch them and bring them healing. Are there others that you would mention today? Spoken prayer request that you would like to mention this morning. 
say, show. And of course, as always, if you would like to be anointed with oil for healing for yourself or for someone else, the altar is open and you can come forward. Let's pray together this morning. Gracious Heavenly Father, today we come before you and we give you thanks that we have made it this far in this year. We thank you that you have guided us as a people and we look back and we look forward anticipating what you will do in the new year. Today, Lord, our hearts are heavy for those in our world who are suffering due to war and fighting and natural disasters. And we pray that you would be at work among your people, through your people, being present where there are those who are suffering, doing what only you and the Holy Spirit can do, bringing comfort, even peace, to those who suffer so. We pray that you would be with our nation's leaders. We just ask that you would guide them so that they might make decisions that lead us more in the direction you would have us to go as a people. We pray for those who serve us in the armed forces of our nation. We pray for the safety of those who serve us as law enforcement and we ask that you would be with those who are also first responders. We thank you for their service. We pray that you would touch Dorothy and help her in her fight against cancer. We pray that you would be with Reddick. Continue to give him health. Strengthen his body. We pray for Brenda, for Tammy. Pray for Bailey, for Carly. We ask that you would be with Andy and Betty Jo. We pray that you would be with Edna. We pray for Clara. We ask that you would continue to help her to recover from this stroke. We pray for Anne, that you would bless her. We pray for Miles and how she seems to be coming along, but we pray that you would continue to be at work helping her to thrive. We pray for Jacob, that he would recover fully and quickly. We pray for Marilyn, that you would touch her and give her body strength. We ask that you would continue to be with Johnny's mother in these days. Give her strength and health. We pray for Celine that she would recover quickly, for Sharon, that you would touch her and help her to recover. We pray for Shiloh, that you would work healing in her body. We pray for this friend April and this friend Dana as they fight cancer. And we ask today that you would be at work in our lives among all of those unspoken prayer requests that have been brought into your house. Today we whisper them from our hearts to you. We trust that you are aware of the deep needs of our lives and are at work in our world, even when we do not see you or your hand, but we wait with anticipation for the good things that you will do. So today we pray a prayer of gratitude, a prayer of thanksgiving that you have been with us throughout this year. And we pray thank you in advance for the blessings that you have in store for us in the upcoming year. Help us not only to be recipients of your blessings in the coming days, but to be a source of your blessing for others. These things we pray in the strong name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Sundays that fall on Christmas Eve and New Year's Eve always seem to sort of heighten the hmm, the anticipation for what in the world are we supposed to say today? Well, if you have your Bibles, find Luke chapter 2, because the fact of the matter is, as the church, we are still in Christmas tide. Those wonderful 12 days of celebration that begin on Christmas Day and run through Epiphany when 
So it's just still Christmas time for us. And in Christmas time, what you do is you celebrate those things and rehearse those lessons that come to us in Scripture in and around the birth of Jesus Christ. And so today, from Luke chapter 2, we'll begin at verse 22 and read to the end of the chapter. A nice, long Scripture. And somebody in God's house said, I just knew it was going to happen. Luke chapter 2, beginning at verse 22, hear the word of the Lord. When the time came for their purification according to the law of Moses, they brought him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male shall be designated as holy to the Lord. And they offered a sacrifice according to what is stated in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, looking forward to the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit rested on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Guided by the Spirit, Simeon came into the temple and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what is customary under the law, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Master, now you are dismissing your servant in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles, and for glory to your people Israel. The child's father and mother were amazed at what was being said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to his mother Mary, This child is destined for the falling and the rising of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be opposed, so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed and a sword will pierce your own soul, too. There was also a prophet, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe of Asher. She was of a great age, having lived with her husband seven years after her marriage, then as a widow to the age of 84. She never left the temple, but worshipped there with fasting and prayer night and day, at that moment, she came and began to praise God and to speak about the child to all who were looking for the redemption of Jerusalem. When they had finished everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. The child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. I find it interesting. Telling and a bit wonderful that the story of the birth of Jesus and Luke's retelling, remember a well-researched account of the life of Jesus, sort of ends or is summed up by the story of these two old people. I know, the older I get, the younger uh, 84 seems. But the fact of the matter is, in Jesus' day, for that matter, in our day, if you make it to 84, you've done pretty good. Not everybody is going to make it that far. I'm sorry to tell you that if you didn't know that already. And in Jesus' day, if you made it to 84, you were really an exception. I mean, really an exception. Ancient in those days. Anna and Simeon. Two old people. And I find it so interesting the way they are described. Just the simple labels that are applied to them. Simeon. The Holy Spirit rested on him. What? An amazing accolade. 
I don't know about you. I can only hope that there's somebody out there who thinks maybe the Holy Spirit rests on me, but for that to be the handle by which you're known, Simeon, on whom the Holy Spirit rested, that's a, that's a goal to be salt. That is a title to be longed for. To be the man in Jerusalem on which the Holy Spirit rested. And Anna, old Anna. I almost think I want to preach a whole sermon about her, but, you know, we had a long scripture. A prophetess, known by the people as a prophetess. I mean, the backstory on Anna, we don't know all that much of. We get a little bit of it here. She had been married. After seven years, her husband died. She had been widowed ever since, and she had basically lived in the temple, a.k.a. this lady was homeless. <laughs> Think about what it means. She lived in the temple. She's just eked out in existence, but in that mode of existence, she earned the label a prophet. Hmm. My guess is you don't really get that label because you're just a crank. But you must have been really something special that people recognized. When that old lady shows up and says something, you might should listen because it's coming straight from God. Remember that the prophet is the one who comes with the message, thus saith the Lord. You get that label in the nation of Israel because you speak the words of God to his people. Simeon and Anna both who are longing for the coming of the Messiah. Hmm. And because of their faithfulness, both before and after the coming of Christ, their names are woven into the story of the gospel of Jesus Christ for all time. We recount the story of the coming of Jesus, his birth, and the stories of Simeon and Anna over and over again throughout the centuries of Christendom. Well, Advent's over. Remember, Advent is that season, those Sundays for before we have Christmas Day, in which we, as a people of God, try to kindle and evoke something of the longing that the people of Israel felt while they waited for the Messiah to come. As they longed for deliverance. Now, certainly some had gotten the idea that that deliverance would be military and political. I'm tempted to draw parallels to our current time. I'll just let you do that with that bit of hint. But some realized that the deliverance that God was bringing was so much more, so much bigger than a nation and one government or one people group. That in fact, 
the deliverance of God, the kingdom of the Messiah would be global in scale, infinite in scope and time, physical and immaterial at the same time. Today we continue not only to try to rekindle some of that anticipation waiting for the coming of God's Messiah to the people of Israel, but we in fact continue to anticipate the coming of Christ. We as his people long for his appearing. It's right to pray the prayer even so come quickly. Lord Jesus. And so here we live in the in-between, the first Advent and the second. And today we find ourselves more or less right in the middle of Christmas tide, that 12-day season beginning with Christmas Day, carrying on through Epiphany, the Epiphany celebrates the arrival of the Magi And maybe most importantly for most of us, the fact that Christ came to bring salvation not only to Israel, but to the Gentile nations as well, represented by those three kings from afar. Praise the Lord. The coming king was more than the king of Israel. But he was my king, too. And so here we are in the middle of the season of celebrating his arrival, his appearance. He has come. Hmm. And so it's, I think, so fitting today for us to imagine ourselves Simeon or Anna. Here we are in the temple of God. Lives spent longing for the expected Messiah. For God to visit his people again. To come in power like the days of old. Through the entrance walks a little family, a mother, a father, carrying a child. I wonder how many children they had seen between the two of them carried into the temple. Boys and girls alike would be blessed. Boys in particular on their eighth day, if they were able to be brought to the temple, might be brought to the temple for the ritual act of circumcision and the sacrifice dedicating the firstborn male child to the Lord, redeeming him. I wonder how many. If you had maybe been in the temple 60-ish years? How many babies were carried into the temple? And so to see one, maybe not even the only one brought that day, but to see one, and for suddenly, the purpose of your whole life to be summed up and fulfilled in that moment of seeing this child for both Simeon and Anna. This was the culmination of all of their hopes and dreams. The promise of God 
not only for the people of God, the nation of Israel, but for the whole world, and not only for the whole world, but for Simeon and for Anna. And there he was. And the Holy Spirit communicates to them. I don't know how he does that. I know how I think he talks to me. And maybe he spoke to them about the same way. Maybe there was some unreasonable swelling of emotion. Or maybe there was a voice in their mind that said, this is the one. Or behold the Messiah. Or, or maybe they were just so drawn that they were aware from their inner being that this was God's Messiah. And they see and they say and they do those things they had been waiting to say and to do for their whole life. I wonder how many times they had rehearsed what they might say if they were able to see the Messiah. Have you ever anticipated someone coming? Had a moment of anticipation. You're thinking they're going to be here. What am I going to say? And you're running through it in your head. Just now imagine that that sense of longing and anticipation, that hoped for visit is delayed for 60 years. And you get to replay in your mind over and over again, what will I say? What will I do? And suddenly the moment is there. Well, we have read what Simeon and Anna said. Hmm. I love the story of Simeon. I love the story of Anna. A whole life spent waiting, actively participating in what's going on in the temple of God, going about their lives, but always knowing that day would come. And now it's here. I find myself blessed by the words of Simeon. Master, now you are dismissing your servant in peace. Thank you, God. The whole purpose of my life has now been accomplished. <laughs> what I've been waiting for, what I've been longing for, you've made happen. Simeon's an old man. And he is actually saying, I can now die happy. Because my eyes have seen the Lord's Messiah. All of those years... And all of those babies brought to the temple. All of those hundreds or thousands of, he's not the one. And yet the whole time, God was at work. And Simeon and Anna knew Something inside of them kept them faithful and attentive, longing for what God had promised he would do. Lessons from Simeon and Anna for us today. God is at work, but we don't always see his hand moving. I just remind you, they saw a lot of babies that weren't the Messiah before they saw the one that was. God has 
plans for you. He has a purpose for your life. I don't know that I say that enough, but I really want you to hear. God has a purpose for your life. He has plans for you. One of the things about the story of Simeon and Anna that I'm reminded of is they were in the temple. They were doing God's work. They were showing up in the right place where God wanted them. And because they showed up, they were able to be in the right place at the right time for what God had purposed them to do. Are you in the right place? Both to hear what God's plans are for you. Are you in the right place to do what God has purposed and planned for you to do? And of course, I don't mean, are you in some building of stone? I mean... Is your heart, is your mind, and is your body obedient to God in a way that places you where you can both hear and do what God wants you to do? If you are, then God will bless your life. That's the promise of the new year. I hope you caught the condition. You got to be in the right place. You have to be where God wants you to be, spiritually and physically. You have to be in a position where God can bless you. And that is a position of surrender to his will. Maybe a word that I need to stress more and you need to hear more and we all need to think about more. Surrender can't be a popular word in the world in which we live, but it's the key to experiencing the fullness of God's blessing for you. Your life, your person, surrendered to God's will. Find that place, and you will be where God needs you to be to both reveal to you your purpose and to bless you with what you need to be able to complete his task for you in this world. My prayer for us, for you as an individual, for us as a people, is that going into a new year, what we will really increase is our surrender to God. It is only in our surrender to His way, His will, that we will be used mightily by Him to accomplish His purposes. He's made that possible for us through the gift of Jesus Christ, his son. We close our year in worship around the table of the Lord. A table that not only reminds us of the death and passion of our Lord, but evokes the hope of his coming again, showing forth his death until the Lord's return. This supper is a means of grace in which Christ is present by the Spirit. 
it is to be received in reverent appreciation and gratefulness for the work of Christ. All those who are truly repentant, forsaking their sins and believing in Christ for salvation are invited to participate in the death and resurrection of Christ. We come to the table that we may be renewed in life and salvation and be made one by the Spirit. You are invited to share with us the communion feast. If you are a born-again believer in Jesus Christ, if today you know Christ is your Savior, or if in the moments as the elements are being passed, you choose to receive him as your Savior. In unity with the church, we confess our faith, and if you know it, say it with me. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And so we pray. Today, our God, we come before you with humility, praying that you would cleanse us of all wrongdoing, making us fit to receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in this communion supper. We pray that you would bless these elements, making them that spiritual gift of food and drink that would impart grace to your people. May we with faith receive all that you have prepared to give to us. We gather at this your table in the name of your son Jesus Christ who by your spirit was appointed to preach the good news to the poor, proclaim release to the captives, and set at liberty those who are oppressed. Christ healed the sick, fed the hungry, ate with sinners, and established the new covenant of forgiveness of sins. We live in the hope of his coming again. We are reminded that on the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread, gave thanks, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, when the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. And so we gather as the body of Christ to offer ourselves to you in praise and thanksgiving, asking you to pour out your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these your gifts. Make them by the power of your Spirit to be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one in Christ and with each other, and one in the ministry of Christ to the whole world until Christ comes in final victory. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, let us be bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Would those who have been asked to help serve, come.
if you would, as you receive the elements, please hold them and we will all partake together. The bread of life sent down from heaven, may it preserve you blameless until his coming again. Take, eat, and be thankful. The cup of salvation, the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ shed for you. May it preserve you blameless until his coming again. Take, drink, and be thankful. Let us pray. Our good and gracious Father, who has given only your best to us, we look back from this moment over a year in which you have been present in which you have blessed us when you have been with us and we give you thanks and we look forward to all that is to come and we know that whatever tomorrow holds you are with us and for that, we are thankful. And so in advance, before the trials and before the blessings of tomorrow, we give you thanks for your presence and power and goodness to us in the days to come. Bless now, I pray, your people. Meet a blessing out for each one, fit for their needs in the coming days. In our future, 
even in the days of the week to come, may we see and know your guidance, your purpose, your power. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we pray. You are dismissed. <laughs>